Cinnamon Giant's Bane has to be one of my favorite characters in the books. Loud, easy to laugh, and always talking about his large member. So today, I want to talk about Tormund Giant's Bane. Tall talker, horn blower, breaker of ice, Tormund Thunderfist, husband to bears, the mead king of Ruddy Hall, speaker to gods, and father of hosts. He is fond of wargs, but not Starks. Tormund is a wildling, or free folk as they call themselves, that is hard not to love. A man with a bone-crushing grip, he's short but incredibly broad with a huge belly and a snow-white beard that spreads out on his vast chest. On his massive arms, Tormund is always seen wearing thick gold bands engraved with runes of the first men that have been in his family for generations. The first time Jon Snow meets him, Jon's first meeting with Mance after posing as a Night's Watch deserter, Tormund is wearing black ring mail that he stole from a dead ranger. He likely has many other items he stole from dead crows or southrons as well. Though it isn't mentioned if Tormund is a great raider who went below the wall to steal, we at least know he has killed plenty of men of the Night's Watch and has a strong hate for them. As he was in the running for the King Beyond the Wall title, a title given to a person that is able to unite many of the Free Folk tribes, it is likely he had some raiding experience under his belt, as raiding is incredibly important in wildling culture and garners a lot of respect. Like most wildlings, Tormund speaks the old tongue, but he also knows the common tongue, which is rare for a wildling. Given he's a wildling, it shouldn't be shocking that he follows the old gods, but he believes the gods are seldom good. Tormund is also illiterate, like many wildlings, claiming he has better things to do than learn to make papers talk to him. And besides, they never have anything nice to say, and can easily contain lies. He has a friendly relationship with at least one giant, Mag the Mighty, but likely many more of them despite his nickname, Giant Spain. Perhaps what makes Tall Talker so loved is his gap tooth smile that can often be seen as he is easy to break out in a grin or laugh. Also, probably the fact that Tormund loves to make jokes. He's the kind of guy that laughs at his own jokes, but you still love regardless, especially since he's also the kind of person that can admit his faults and weaknesses which is a great leadership quality, along with his ability to forgive easily, or at least know when to forgive, and not hold a grudge. When meeting with Jon Snow again after learning he had lied about his loyalty, he talks to him like a normal person and doesn't appear to hold on to much, if any, anger. He even congratulates Jon on how well his fellow crows held the wall when they attacked. Which again, with his hate for the crows, that's a big deal to be able to compliment the people that killed his people. Tormund considers himself very well suited for getting drunk and is free-handed with his alcohol, allowing others to enjoy his incredibly strong beverages. Alcohol so strong that it makes Jon Snow's eyes water and sends tendrils of fire snaking through his chest. Tormund also considers his word to be strong as iron, and his word can get… very loud. He was named Hornblower for the power of his lungs. He can laugh the snow off mountaintops, and his bellows are like a mammoth trumpeting. It's really hard to ignore Tormund when he doesn't want to be ignored, and oh boy does he rarely want to be ignored. The man loves the talk, called a windbag by others, and he's constantly using his names in conversation, such as saying, Tormund Thunderfist had better things. The amount of times he refers to himself in the third person with his nicknames is truly amazing. Now, if you want to know where Tormund's many names come from, all you have to do is ask him. The Wildling has many stories, and who can say how many of them are true, or true-ish? Besides, would you doubt a man as mighty as the Giant's Bane? Jon Snow does, considering him a great bag of wind and lies, but we won't count his opinion. Of course, there's also Rattleshirt, who tells Tormund he'll prick him with his sword, and when all the air is out, he'll shrink smaller than a girl. But he's just a mean person in general. Okay, I guess others have called him an old man with a great sack of wind, but we'll also say they're all just Tormund haters. So, according to Tormund, he earned the name Giant Spain when he was half a boy and it was winter. Caught in a true winter storm, he feared death after his horse died and he had traveled too far. So he found a sleeping giant, cut open her belly, and crawled inside her to stay warm. It is uncertain how many days Tormund stayed there, but he says the giant woke up when spring came, and she took him for her babe. She suckled him for about three months before he got away. There's times he still misses giant's milk. There's a theory that this story is a huge exaggeration, surprise, 
and that Tormon was actually the wildling that stole Great John Umber's female cousin 30 years ago. Some believe stealing an Umber, whose sigil is a giant, and having children with her was how he earned the nickname Giant's Bane. Stealing a child of a noble house of the north during a wildling raid will get Tormon tons of respect, and perhaps helped him with his attempt to become a king beyond the wall. Then there's the story of how he became known as Father of Bears. It happened another winter, colder than the one he spent inside the giant, when it was snowing all day with snowflakes as big as a man's head. The snow half buried his village and left Tormon trapped in Ruddy Hall with a cask of mead to keep himself company. So he drank, but the more he drank, the more he began to think of a woman that lived close by. A fine, strong woman with the biggest breast he had ever seen and a terrible temper. The more he thought of her, the harder he got until he couldn't take it anymore. He bundled himself up and went out to get her. He found her and she put up a terrible fight, but he was able to carry her home and have a, quote, final time. The next morning, he woke to find he was all ripped and torn with half his member bit right off. Though ladies don't fear because half his member is still twice as long as any other man's. On the floor, he found a she-bear's pelt and soon after the free folk were telling stories of a bald bear in the woods with the queerest pair of cubs behind her. There's a theory from this story that the bear Tormon slept with was actually a Mormont whose house lived on Bear Island and their sigil is a bear. The wildlings are known to raid that far and if Tormon was attempting to be a king beyond the wall while Mance was, he likely went on some big raids that won him respect. Without a doubt, we know the wildlings respect him because he led them after Mance was taken. So the theory is he raided Bear Island and found Meg Mormont, Gior Mormont's sister, stole her and had intimate relations with her. This would fit Tormon's claim his feisty woman was a she-bear. As the Mormont women have been called that, they have a bear as part of their sigil, and they claim they are skin changers who change into bears to find mates in the woods. Meg Mormont is described as willful and short-tempered, exactly like the woman described in Tormon's story. It gets more suspicious when we learn Meg has five daughters, but no one knows who the father is, or if she's even married, the rumor being she beds with bears. Despite the father being unknown, her children still retain the last name Mormont, not Snow, suggesting she married a family of no nobility or lower nobility than her own, which could have been sweet smitten Tormon. Or it could mean what we all know to be true. The Mormonts have no fucks to give and decided the girls were keeping the family name. It would make sense Meg would hide that she had children with a wildling as the North really, really hate the free folk. So instead, stubborn, short-tempered Meg keeps her daughters, doesn't ever talk about the father, and no one dares to question that woman. There is some speculating that maybe they had both boys and girls, and that the boys went with Tormon to be respected warriors beyond the wall, and not mess with inheritance on Bear Island, or even raise a question of being legitimate, and the girl stayed with Meg. We see Tormon's children match the description of both of them, so it very well could be true. No doubt he also fathered children with other women as well, given the wildlings hold no shame in bastards. Though if he kept going back for seconds, who knows? And maybe the Umber and Mormont theories are both correct. That would explain the difference in appearance of his kids. However, both theories are a whole lot of speculating, and there's numerous holes in both. So getting past theories, besides with women and eventually Jon Snow, I'd say Tormund's best relationship is with Mance Raider, the king beyond the wall. Tormund had once meant to make himself a king beyond the wall, as I mentioned earlier, but Mance convinced him to join him instead and be part of his council or as close to a council as he had. Mance and Tormon were very playful in how they treated each other, such as Tormon always asking Mance if he means him as well when Mance tells everyone to leave, and Mance typically responding, no, you especially, or particularly you, always. And then Tormon would pretend to be hurt and leave. But that's okay, because Tormon claims that while Mance is more cunning, he can outdrink, outfight, and outsing Mance, and his member, is three times the size of Mance's. There's enough trust between the men that Mance gives him the Horn of Winter. M maybe it still isn't clear whether they ever had the horn or it was destroyed, but Mance seems to trust Tormund enough to send him off to blow it in three days' time if the Night's Watch don't let the Wildlings cross the wall. If he didn't actually give him the horn, he trusted Tormund enough to be part of his crafty plans. 
Sadly, as of now in the books, Tormund believes Mance is dead and is unaware he wasn't actually the one burned. All right, I know what you're thinking at this point. We are way too far into this video and I have barely, barely mentioned Tormund's member. Perhaps the most well-known or quoted thing about Tormund is his love for his member and talking about penises in general, it would seem. There are many examples of Tormund talking up his penis or managing to bring up other men's penises. When giving up the gold bands on his arms, as is part of the agreement for John to let in Tormund and his wildlings behind the wall, he says he'll keep the ring he wears around his member, which is much bigger than the little things he wears around his massive arms. He also insinuates he could save Hardhome with his giant pecker alone. Or so other men claim, that's what he's boasting. And we already know that he told John his penis is three times bigger than Mance's. But again, he also likes to bring up other men's penises. When referring to the man that stole his daughter, Longspear, he says his daughter likes him well enough, considering he wasn't given the name Longspear for his ability to fight with a spear. There's also other times, such as saying another wildling has a little red cock to go with all that red hair. Oh, or when Tormon is just puzzled why John won't sleep with Egret and tries to explain to him that John stole her and that she is his. He even suggests that crows cut off their own members when taking the black, but that may have been more of a poke at John for not sleeping with her. When John refuses to touch her, Tormon advises him to find a she-bear. Because if a man doesn't use his member, it grows smaller and smaller until one day he wants to piss and cannot find it. Really, I could make an entire video of Tormon's penis talks. But sadly, enough of penises. Despite his easygoing, happy nature, Tormund isn't afraid to fight, and he has some downsides to his character. He knows that while he might be better than most, he's not so good as some. One of my favorite moments showing his fighting spirit is when Tormund tells Rattleshirt, who's come for Jon Snow, come take him then, but best come with sword in hand, for that's where you'll find mine. Might be I'll boil your bones and use your skull to piss in. Har. The har at the end just really makes it. John admits Tormund seems to be the sort of man who would make a good friend and a bad enemy, showing you can be lovable, fierce, and respected. A downside to Tormund is he often doesn't think before he speaks. He just does it, which has caused some problems for him and others in the past, such as ruining Mance's testing of Jon Snow. But he can be reasoned with, thankfully and knows how to admit when he's in the wrong, and to work with his weaknesses. And though he is flawed in some ways, Tormund is a fine leader. The wildlings look to him to lead numerous times, and it's important to note, he can both chew on meat and bellow orders to his men at the same time. Very talented. So that is the essence of Tormund Giantsbane. Easy going, ass kicking wildling. Now I wanna go over Tormund's actions in the books. As I mentioned in the beginning, Tormund met John. When the boy met Mance Raider for the first time, after pretending to be a turncloak and slaying Corrin Halfhand, Mance gives John a chance to prove himself and puts him in Tormund's company, partly to keep the boy away from Rattleshirt, who wanted him dead. Tormund introduces John to giants and Mag the Mighty, who will end up dying during the Wildlings' attack on Castle Black. Tormund is with Mance when he brings the Wildlings to the wall for an assault. When Jon Snow is forced to treat with Mance, really given orders to kill him, after the first attack by the Wildlings on Castle Black, Tormund is the first to greet him. Tormund hadn't seen him since Jon betrayed the Wildlings and returned to the Night's Watch, but despite that, he isn't really mad at Jon, or doesn't display it. He talks about how well the Crows fought, and they have a genuine conversation. When Jon informs him Egret died, Tormund is sad to hear it, considering it a waste and wishing he had been 10 years younger so he could have stolen her himself. He drinks with Jon Snow and her and others' memory. When Jon gets to the tent with Mance, Tormund sticks up for Jon and defends his right to speak with Mance. In the middle of the talks with Mance, Stannis Baratheon attacks and Tormund goes out to lead a triple line of spearmen that fall apart during the battle. When the battle is over and Stannis sorely beats the wildlings, Tormund is able to get away and regather some of the wildlings and become a leader in Mance's stead. We learn later he watched a knight kill one of his sons during the battle. After being out so long with his people after Stannis' beatdown of the wildlings, Tormund is eventually brought to the wall by Vale. When he comes back, he is a changed man. He's seen too much death and worse. 
He tells John he saw his one son, Dormon, cut down in battle for the wall, still half a boy, and then his child died before he reached him. Another of his sons, Torwin, died from the cold after Stannis' attack, and Tormon regathered the wildlings. Torwin was always sickly, and even though Tormon didn't consider his son much of a man, calling him the Tame, he was once his little boy, and he loved him regardless. Tormon vividly recalls to Jon the snow, sleet, and freezing rain on their journey, and how hard it had been to find dry wood or to get the kindling lit. On the nights the cold came in, the fire seemed to shrivel and die, and there would always be dead in the morning unless the reanimated dead found you in the night before first light. On their journey, his son was one of these victims, dying sometime in the night, and they didn't know until he rose again, pale with blue eyes. Tormon had been the one to put his son down himself. By the end of the latest book, Dance with Dragons, he still has two sons and a daughter, Toreg, Drin, and Munda. Unfortunately, his only daughter, Munda, is stolen by Longspear, infuriating Tormon that her brothers and him couldn't defend her. But proud of his daughter, who broke Longspear's lip, gave him so many scratches people claim he can't wear a cloak, and she bit one ear half off. Despite that, Tormon admits that his daughter likes Longspear well enough. But if he ever hurts her, he'll rip his cock off and beat him bloody with it. After coming to the Wall, Jon gives Tormon terms for his wildlings to come beyond the Wall for protection from the others and food. Tormon is enraged by Jon's terms, considering it a blood price and that a hundred wildling mothers will never forgive either of them. However, he has no choice as they are starving and being picked off by the others. After hearing Jon's terms, Tormon begins shouting, throwing things at Jon, hitting objects, and showing his temper. Thankfully, he drinks all his mead every time before throwing his cup at Jon. During the negotiations, he calls Jon Snow a craven, a liar, and a turncloak, cursing him for being a black-hearted, buggery kneeler, a robber, a carrion crow, and accused him of wanting to fuck the free folk up the arse. But the anger eventually gives away to reason, after alcohol helps, of course, and eventually Tormon settles down and agrees to the terms. As part of the terms, the wildlings are required to give up their wealth. Wildling warriors must guard the wall, non-warriors to settle the gift, and all the important wildlings or chiefs are required to give up a boy hostage between the ages of 8 and 16 to serve as pages and squires. The total is made to be 100 boy hostages, and since there aren't enough chiefs or captains with children, a lot is drawn for the rest. Tormon hands over his gold bands, even though Jon Snow tells him he doesn't have to. Lord Huge Member responds, No, I'll not have it said that Tormon Thunderfist made the Free Folk give up their treasures while he kept his own. So he gives them up while calling Jon a thieving black bastard. When Jon Snow takes Drin, Tormon's youngest son who looks like a miniature Tormon with his wide red face, thick arms, and short legs, as one of the hostages, he tells Tormon he will take the boy as his own page. Well, he said that before he got stabbed a lot. Tormon tells Lord Snow to watch for Drin's teeth, he bites, and that he needs to be beat from time to time. But he also tells Jon that if he doesn't take good care of his son, he'll cook Jon's black liver up and eat it. Here's where Tormon and Jon's friendship is really seen, or maybe Tormon's ability to be a good leader and know when to make peace. Despite the anger Tormon feels over Jon's terms and giving up his son, Tormon and Jon remain close. He even jokes that Jon should give up his bloody bird because he gave up his son. Mostly staying out of trouble while at Castle Black, Tormon isn't too impressed with Stannis' wife and jokes about her. When he sees how many guards she has around her, he says, Afraid of being carried off, is she? I hope you never said how big me member is, Jon Snow. That'd frighten any woman. I always wanted me one with a mustache. While behind the wall, Jon also gets counsel from Tormon and shares private information. Tormon's eldest surviving son, Toreg, is often close to his father as well, though not in on these private meetings. Jon even relies on Tormon to quiet men so he can talk. During Tormon's time at Castle Black, he informs Jon that Mance never found the Horn of Winter, and he only wanted the crows to think that they had the power to bring down their wall. Jon doesn't know whether to believe him or not. Jon gives Tormon the Night's Watch Castle, Oakenshield as his seat, and Tormon swears to serve until spring. Before he can go to his new castle, the Lord Commander asks Tormon to take a party and rescue the wildlings at Hardhome. 
Whether Tormon will actually go on this mission is unknown. John is stabbed repeatedly before Tormon can leave with his party, and he likely will not go after that event. So that is our lovable Tormon, father of bears, bag of wind. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please like, subscribe, and come back for more videos every week. Until